Hi and welcome to this video from the DTEC Applied Science Level 3 and in this one we're going to be looking at the Unit 2 Assignment 2 walkthrough for exactly what you need to include here. So we've got two pass criteria, one merit, one distinction and we'll try and pick them out exactly within the specification, what they refer to and how you would go about achieving them. So P3 initially is fairly straightforward to achieve. P3 is down here uh, where we say learners will use a table of their own design. So generally just what you want is temperature with your unit and time either in minutes or seconds typically and you would just have a table with those going down to record your readings. You will demonstrate key practical competencies in calorimetry including be able to set the vessel up, uh, meld it and then just simply watching it as it cools down it should freeze into a solid so following a standard procedure there means that's nice you're just going to be following the method and hopefully not asking too many questions quite a straightforward one so this in here p3 essentially is just do the practical there is a little bit as well where since you're using a thermometer in there you should have calibrated it uh, beforehand up here to using ice and boiling water because we should all know off the top of our head ice zero celsius boiling water 100 celsius and your thermometer should agree with those too if it doesn't what you could do is perhaps use a digital thermometer rather than the mercury al alcohol and hopefully that gives you a better reading so once you've done the practical, then what you will need to do is set up a graph. So P4 down here. Graph first of all. Learners might not select the most appropriate scale. Now what it means by the most appropriate scale is when you are drawing your graph, your plotted points should cover at least half the page. And I mean just one A4 page. I've seen learners sellotape five, six pieces of graph paper together. That doesn't um, cover it. It's cheating essentially. So one A4 page, point should cover at least half of it. If it doesn't, then you'll not get onto the higher bit. It could still tick off the paths. They will label axes correctly. Keep it in there. Do not forget that. So... Should have what's going on each of the axes and what the units are. So across here, obviously we've got time, we've got temperature. So just make sure they're on the appropriate axes along with whatever unit you've used for them. And then you're simply plotting your points. Hopefully you get a shape that looks something like that. And then the other bit, they will accurately determine the rate of cooling near the star. So I'm getting a bit pushed for space down here. But I do have another video showing this, where you will need to take a tangent at that initial point, change in Y over change in X, and you therefore get your rate of cooling in Celsius per minute, or per second, depending upon um, how you've set it up to record it. You must show the ability to draw that. It's a graph. Plus tangent down there for P4. Now the merit bit for M2. Demonstrate an appropriate amount of solid. So generally just when you've got your tube, you should have enough solid in that you can actually see it within there. So you don't just want a little bit of the bottom and likewise you don't want to fill the full tube really. You want enough in there that you can actually see whether it's turned into a liquid and when it's turned back into a solid. Setting up the equipment to enable heating, generally fairly straightforward. You're just heating it up with a Bunsen and then you'll have it sitting resting in a beaker or maybe just clamped around. Or you can use hot water as well to heat it up, whichever. 
And then as long as you've got a hold of it, you're just keeping an eye on it, turning back into a solid. So you'll be recording the temperature as you've got a clock. And again, depending upon how often you are setting it, every 30 seconds or minute, what the temperature is. Now, up here, demonstrate numerical skill and graph plotting. So this is where you do need, as I said before, your point, your plotted point, covering at least half the page. So when you've got your page, and you set your axes up, it may be a case of where you can just have zero, skip a little bit out and say, start at 40, up to 90, and then you've got all of your points plotted within there like that. So it means you're not cramming everything up the top if nothing happened between 0 and 40 down here. Appropriate labels. Again, axes should be labeled. Including units, which highlighted there. Smooth best fit curve. So just by hand, just line of roughly best fit. Do not go dot to dot down it. Just smooth curve. So from there. Drawing tangents at appropriate points. Rate of cooling near start, end, and change dramatically in between. So we want one there. We want one at the plateau. And we want one down here. So Again, right angle triangle at those three points in there, we should get a very steep drop somewhere where it's pretty much plateaued and flattened out, and then a much more gentle gradient near the end there as it's cooling towards room temperature. Now, the other little bit in here, theory bit. So they will draw valid conclusions linking the rate of cooling to what is happening at a molecular level in terms of the positions and velocity of the molecules and the forces between them. We'll be able to explain which part of the graph corresponds to, for example, the melting point. In there. Now, what's happening at the molecular level? Why is it cooling fast initially? Think about sort of the temperature difference between your material and the room. And in terms of GCSE physics, you would have looked at conductive, convective, and radiative forces. And try and think about which of those would be cooling this down very quick. And at the end, cooling it down quite slowly. And then in here, why is it plateaued out? Well, if you're going from a liquid to a solid, solids have lots of bonds between uh, our molecules in this case. So if bonds are forming, bonds forming releases energy. So some of the energy is being given out to the environment, but your material itself is actually forming bonds and basically trying to heat itself up. What we get a point here is kind of where the energy being given out to the environment is balanced by the energy released by the bonds forming. So uh, it's, it's more or less warming itself up at the same rate, essentially, that it's giving energy out to the environment. So hence the temperature stays roughly the same for a certain period of time until all of the bonds have formed, it went from a liquid to a full solid, and then it starts cooling down again. So M2, good graph. Three tangents. And then theory. Now, the distinction. Learners will interpret outcomes of their calorimetry to make sound judgments on accuracy. So, whatever melting point you've got for your two chemicals, Google the true value, make sure to reference where you get the true value from, and compare yours to it. Is it close or not? Uh, maybe do a percentage uh, difference and see whether or not 
if there's a large value there. Now, the appropriate mathematical terminology, rapid increase, decrease, approximately constant, to be honest, you should have talked about this in the merit bit, so we can hopefully say we've already done that. And likewise, describe the trends and the patterns. Evaluate how close yours are to the literature and to class values. Go have done that up there. You can get some of your classmates and say compare your melting point to theirs along with the true to see whether or not you've carried out the practical better. Because then what we've got again, specific errors or problems. So what we need to say here is because we're being asked to uh, does it say it? Evaluate. We need to talk about things that we've done well is along with things that we've done badly where we could improve them and give a kind of overall comment on our practical. So what I could say is something like I recorded every 30 seconds. This is good. But my thermometer was just a alcohol one and I could have used a digital instead. But I can say overall, my value, say if I got a melting point of 50 degrees C and the true one was 51 degrees C, overall, clearly I've done the practical quite well even if I could have improved it a little bit with this in order to get those being exactly the same. You can also try and change the way the substance was cooled. So for example, did you cool it in air or did you cool it in water? So did you just have this sitting watching it or did you put it in a beaker of water and let it cool down that way? Talk about which would cool it down faster or slower and what effect that would have on the shape of this graph. Would it make it easier to read or not? So distinction, again, this is the key bit, evaluation. You should always be talking about things you've done well, things that could be improved, and give an overall thought from yourself on whether or not the practical was good enough, essentially. Thank you.